Hello and welcome back for another clarinet tutorial from Nottingham Music Excellence. I'm going to play the fantasy piece by Garde from the Grade 4 clarinet book today. So if you're looking to improve your clarinet playing, then start right now. Maybe consider subscribing to Nottingham Music Excellence for lots of tips and tricks. And I do lots of tutorials for ABRSM repertoire. And also on this video, I'm going to give a little tutorial on the detail of the music and give you an opportunity to play along with the accompaniment all by yourself. So grab your clarinets, grab your Bluetooth speaker. I hope you enjoy the video. Here we go. Okay, so you've heard the music. Let's say a few words about the detail and what you need to do to make this sound really awesome. So I think first of all, we should talk about perhaps the difficulty of it, the style of the music. It looks fairly simple on the page, doesn't it? It looks quite easy. But I think it's one of those musical kind of pieces that will, will really test you. And, and I don't think actually one of the easier pieces out of the, uh, out of the A pieces. So I think this is quite a delightful little piece actually. It's more, you could definitely say it's more of a musical based piece rather than one of those technically awkward pieces. So the musicianship is up there and perhaps the technique is sort of down there a little bit. And it is one of those pieces, there are similarities here, definite similarities to Schumann. It mentions that in the, in the blurb at the bottom of the page. It's kind of like, um, you might say a kind of a poor man Schumann this piece. It's not quite, in terms of the, the quality of the composition is not quite up there with Schumann, I don't think. But, you know, it's lovely music and nice to play and, and perhaps it's a, you know, it could be a taster of what's to come. So in terms of the, the notes and the technique, not an awful lot to say on this one, I don't think. But let's have a little chat about, let's go straight in and talk about the Akikatura. Now it mentions actually at the bottom of the page that the Akikatura is optional. I think that's a bit of a shame to leave that out actually because it is one of the nice little features of the music and if you play it in the right way it's not too bad to put in there but let's talk about a couple of ways of getting that right so step number one so you could use this top side key here you may never have used it you may not even know what that key does actually you don't really use it hardly at all on the clarinet but that will give you a kind of a duff B
So it doesn't sound great, but that could work as an Aki Kachura note for this piece. So you could go. And then on the next bar, when you've got a B quaver, you could just use the standard B. Now that could work. I don't like it a lot though. It, it's a duff note. And if I can, if I can play the, the standard B finger in, then I'm always going to go for that in preference. So let's talk about this Akekatura B with the B finger in. So if you use one finger down here on the right hand, you can actually, those fingers won't affect the next note. So you can kind of, um, So you can really minimize the key work here. Just leave that hand down and uh, you'll notice if you look carefully me playing this piece, you'll see that my hands hardly move at all when I'm playing that Ake Kachura because I'm just keeping that down. So when I flick off the B to the A, I'm actually not taking those fingers off. And, and that reduces all the kind of flapping around and just makes it a little bit more manageable. So personally, I would go for that method rather than trying to flick up to that side key, but you know, whatever you, whatever you think is good. So I'll just compare them both again. So on that first moment where it happens, so bar nine and 10, I'll play that one. And then I'll play this other one. I think this is certainly one of those pieces that if you're trying to play it with the backing track, it's quite tricky to play with the backing track to hear all the quavers and to hear all the detail in the piano part. So I would recommend a bit like what I did with the Schumann actually, if for grade seven, is practice it uh, with the piano score and really look at both parts moving along at the same time and really practice it that way so you get to know all the features of the piano part as well. And also exactly what I did with the Schumann is that I tended to just write just a few little bits of what the piano part does. Um, just the sforzando that matches with that. Maybe a few rhythms here and there. I've written some quavers there. Not a lot really, but just a few things now and again over there, just, to, just so I feel more comfortable that I'm on track with the piano. And if you don't know the music very well, I've never played this before actually, so I didn't know it at all. I've heard of it but never actually played it. Um, so do that and it will really help you learn the music a lot faster. And the last point I think I should make is, I think because this is a, a more of a slower, more melodically kind of beautiful piece of music, it is more exposed on the tuning. So be mindful of that. Um, some instruments obviously are more in tune than others and just make sure you've got a nice clear read, but just be careful at the end, you can, end up really quite sharp here. It finishes on a long open G. It's actually three, six, seven, eight, eight beats worth of G there with a pause note as well on the last note. It's a long time on a G if you're horrendously sharp. Um, so just a little tip there on that last note, if you need to bring it down a bit, you can dull that G down by just adding those right hand fingers maybe. And aside from the Ake Kachura detail that I've, I've talked about, there is one little feature that perhaps we'll just say a few words about before 48, so 47, 46. This is your big moment here. So don't let this kind of uh, fall over as a bit of a flop. So I think really go for it here. This is, this is where it's all heading to, isn't it? So. It's a big sound on that E flat. but then you've got to lighten it back to piano again. So quite tricky. So make a big sound there and make it a big moment, but be prepared to back off again very soon afterwards. So I think that's all I'm going to say on the detail of the music here. Have a go at playing along with the piano accompaniment yourself and see if you can get it really in time. Here we go.
Okay guys, I think that's it for Fantasy Peace on this one. If you did enjoy the video, then of course click that like button and let me know how you're getting on with grade 4 clarinet. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.